everybody sean pierce johnson here welcome to the home studio hope you guys are all doing well today is kind of a special day here on my channel because we have another pedal board build here today which we've been doing a lot of and one of the big reasons we've been doing it is because of my friends at framus warwick and rockboard and today that pedal board build is coming courtesy of them they were very kind to send me a huge package care package i guess i could say uh with everything that one could possibly want in order to build the absolute ultimate pedal board and well judging by what you are going to be seeing on your screen as the shot fades in right now this thing is quite extensive and this thing is quite huge this thing is probably in the pedal boards that I've built within the last year and a half, probably the most solid one that I have put together and the one that I feel probably has the best sound and the best combination of things on it that I could possibly need at this particular moment in time. We need to talk about exactly how this whole thing came together. So I'm gonna take you down to the workshop right now and show you a little bit of the process of what it took to get to this point, as well as point out some of the cool rock board accessories that went into this board. Now, we've built a pedal board for my wife using a rock board, and that was a smaller board with the gig bag. Well, rock board was kind enough to send me this big honkin' dude in a nice, beautiful flight case. It's got wheels, it's got handles, it's got everything that you could really need in order to build a large pedal board and be able to transport it. Thank God. Let's take a look inside. I gotta say, this is a pretty nice flight case. I have not had the leisure of having my own road case for a pedal board before. As you can see, very well padded, and there's a nice little pocket right alongside here for various different cables and odds and ends and things like that. We have all the rows of Velcro we need. We even get some zip ties and some Allen keys. Uh, that's very nice, and some extra feet. We have instructions in German. We have instructions in English. It's a bilingual pedal board. And here is our brand new Rockboard by Warwick Sync 5.3. Made out of a single piece of rolled aluminum. It's lightweight, lots of little odds and ends places to put your cables for your power supplies, for your audio. Everything could pretty much go right here. It's very nicely laid out and I like it a lot. Let's check out the underside. Now these feet are actually removable. The Allen keys included in the package can remove the feet on the bottom and you can either remove or add feet to your rock board depending upon your particular needs. Now for me, 
I am going to go ahead and leave these guys all in so that 100% of the weight on this pedal board is supported from the far left and right side, mid left, right, and center. Now, of course, this whole package was not just the pedal board that Rockboard sent to me. They also sent me a large package of cables and power supplies and other pedal board odds and ends. Accessories, if you will. The Mod 1 patch bay is basically if you're a guitar player, bass player, keyboard player, anybody who uses quarter inch connectors predominantly for their rig is going to want to use this patch bay. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. As you can see on the front, we have five ins and outputs, jacks if you will, A, B, C, D, and E, one XLR jack, power input, like, you know, small barrel, nine volt supply type deal, and then an IEC inlet that on the back you have to be able to connect to a power supply that might be under your pedal board. With your rockboard patch bay, you're going to receive this nice little Allen key and three little screws that are going to go on the left hole and the right hole, right in that nice little space right here on the front of the pedal board. It's a pretty simple installation. You're just going to put the screws in and screw them in. There you go, all set. Got to admit, that took a little longer than I would have wanted it to. The next logical thing we need to talk about is power. And the guys were kind enough to send over a couple different power supplies. The smaller of the two is the power block. It's got four nine volt power supply ports on the left and right side. And then we have some 18 volters right here, 18 volt input right there and boom. And the big granddaddy power supply of it all is the power pit. Probably the most extensive power supply that Rockboard has within their line. Nice big rubber feet on the bottom, well ventilated. So we have four nine volt outputs with 500 milliamps. We have a nine volt running at 210 isolated. We have another isolated nine volt 210 milliamp. We have a third one of those. And finally, this guy right here is a nine to 18 volt adjustment, which you can select right here up on the top between nine, 12, 15, and 18 volts. Pretty, Pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. Now, before we really get down to it, this is a big tip that I can give you guys when it comes to building your own boards. Don't put the Velcro down on the board before you start laying things out. I've got dual lock and Velcro on a lot of what I have down here with me and is eventually going to go on this board. And nothing sucks more than having to rip your pedals off the Velcro or dual lock before you figure out where things are going to go. So take it from me, leave the board bare, lay out your pedals, take some notes, take some pictures, and then lay down your base coat, so to speak. this particular layout, personally. It has just about everything that I want to have on this sort of adventurous board, give or take a couple pedals, just based on the fact that I'm not really, I don't really have them with me right now. Again, like I said, it's a multi-day process. Don't worry about it, okay, Arthur, be reasonable. Well, we have a new t-shirt on, so that logically must mean it's a new day. I've been doing some thinking overnight, yes, because I tend to do my best thinking at night, and I've decided to kind of go with a little bit of a different concept than I originally intended to. So what that's going to mean is I'm going to have some pedals in front of G2, maybe even some pedals after G2, not going to be worrying about utilizing the amp, the effects loop for gain and time-based stuff. Everything's just going to go into the front end of the amplifier. I find that I'm doing that more than I really want to these days, so thus I'm going to make some adjustments. Go get it energized!
One small little strategy I want to show you guys here, and I, as you can see, I've added some strips of my favorite glow-in-the-dark duct tape. And basically what I'm doing is, as I'm plugging in the power for each pedal on top of the board, I'm just taking a Sharpie and I'm writing down what pedals are on what power supply port. So I have the OC2 here, the op amp Big Muff here. Over here on the power pit, I have the G2 marked off, the Nux Atlantic, and I just plugged in power for the Toxic Fuzz from Retrohead. So I'm gonna go right ahead and add on a little label. It says Toxic, or some variation. So you can see this wasn't exactly the easiest uh, build in the entire world. And really when you're trying to put together a pedal board that you want to be able to use live, studio, uh, for songwriting purposes, and, and really anything that's going to perform consistently well, you need to put a lot of time and effort and work into it in order for it to never fail you. And so far, so good with this board. Obviously you see that it's changed ever so slightly from those shots in the uh, build portion of this video. And the reason for that is because after I had finished the first iteration, I started noticing a few noise issues. Um, I wasn't 100% able to diagnose exactly what the problem area was. So in all honesty, I, I ripped everything apart and I started over again. The main component like all the boards, has been the Gig Rig G2. You know, ever since I got it, like three, four years ago, this thing has been the lifesaver for me. And basically, I have a ton of presets all programmed on this side of the G2. And then on the left side, right here, these six switches are all instant access stomp box switches, which basically allow me to bring in and out individual pedals within G2's loops. How does everything flow? Well, basically, everything comes from the guitar and goes into the rockboard patch bay that's at the front of the pedal board. I think you can see that. Yeah, you can sort of see up there where all the cables go into that little red box up front. From there, the first thing that the guitar sees is this, and that is the Retro Head Effects Toxic Fuzz. I did that for a very specific reason, um, because I wanted the fuzz pedals to see as true of a guitar signal as possible. I find that fuzzes just interact better when they're not in a loop or not influenced, especially not influenced by a buffer. And so out of the Toxic Fuzz into the Electro Harmonics Big Muff, again, one of the weird things that I experienced in the original iteration was I had the Octaver seeing the guitar first. And when I would use the op amp big muff I found that I couldn't turn the volume up past like nine o'clock which I've never had the, that experience of before so it was a little worrying so I, I again just put all the fuzz right where the guitar is going to see it first. After that into the octaver and then into the G2. So the loops in G2 are as follow. The Defcon 4 by Walrus Audio is loop number one. Loop two is the compressor Plus by Keeley Electronics, probably my favorite compressor right now. The MXR Stereo Chorus, which is one that I haven't busted out in a while, and I'm kind of really enjoying having it on there, uh, is in loop three, followed by the Flat Light by Old Blood Noise Endeavors, and then the MXR EVH Phase 90 coming after that. So then we get to the boost section, which is loop six on the board, and that's represented by the KMA Machines Stroker and the Bonsai by JHS. Now, if you notice, I have them slightly off from the line of pedals that are immediately behind G2. And that's so that I can reach over this front row of pedals and be able to decide which one of these boost pedals I wanna have be active in the loop, kind of just so I have different options. And that 
definitely comes in handy when you're using multiple guitars. After the boost section is the Keeley filaments, which is providing the bulk of my gain tones uh, on this particular board. After that, we have the Flashback 2 with my Chaos Crescendo tone print. We have the Fathom by Walrus Audio. And then finally, the last thing in G2 is the Nux Atlantic or New X Atlantic uh, running some uh, plate style reverb and then getting kicked on for a little bit of an 80s style a digital delay. Here are the things that I've done differently with this particular board. First and foremost, I'm running everything into the front end of the amplifier, which I, I had done with my Warp Tour pedal board build. But this time, the thing that's different is I'm actually running two amps at one time. So what you're gonna be hearing is a combination of my Rockerverb 100 and my Boss Katana. And the Boss Katana is on the 50 watt setting. <laughs> It sounds pretty dang good. I'm actually very pleased with that. The clean tone, this is a really cool one. It kind of just has this nice, warbly, rich kind of vibe. <laughs> with this particular patch is that the DEFCON 4 is really what brings it into focus. I have it on a stomp box switch, so I'll, I'll double tap that to take it out of the preset. And you can, let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> The compressor definitely helps rein things in, but what I find that the DEF CON 4 is able to do, when I add it in, it's carving out that mid-range frequency that tends to distort for guitars a little bit sooner and makes clean guitar sounds a little harder to achieve. I'm gonna switch guitars to the main Les Paul. This is really handy, especially for that guitar. You know, the DEFCON 4 was supposed to be like a strat fixer, but I actually find that it's just a, a general good fixer upper pedal uh, that'll kind of shape the tone in ways that you may not have thought you could get a certain guitar to sound. I can get really glassy clean tones out of this guitar thanks to that pedal. The dirt is basically the filaments and whatever boost pedal I want to stack in front of it. This is just the filaments by itself. I don't have either of the boost pedals on in front of it. <laughs> And I like the sound of that, but the boost pedals give it a little bit of a different edge. Here's the bonsai. And that's on the TS-10 setting. But let's listen to the difference when I add in the stroker. dirty sounds end up getting the Nux Atlantic for its reverb. I have it a little bit tighter, a little bit more subtle, not as washy. That's kind of the nifty thing of having two different reverb pedals. Maybe I should just, you know, get a, a Blue Sky or a Big Sky or, a D, or an RV500 or something. <laughs> It's really hard to argue with, with this setup. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun getting to know it and getting to use it a little bit more intimately uh, 
over the course of the last several weeks using it in rehearsals and even you know just practicing uh, my band's songs with it it definitely it definitely feels like something that I could really get into using uh, the thing for me though this is so different because I am such a I, I want to use the gain from the amplifier that's really what I like and that's really what speaks the most to me but I'm just running into too many situations recently where there's just no real opportunity for me to consistently be able to use a setup where I'm using both channels of the amplifier and then also using everything that I normally want. All in all, this board was really all about just seeing what I could do with all the things that Rockboard sent me. Everything from the power supplies to the patch bays to the patch cables, the power... I mean, it was all over the place. There were so many different things that they sent, and I was just really looking forward to seeing how far I could take the lineup and how far I could take everything that they sent along. And if you ask me, they're putting out an entire lineup of pedal boards and accessories for those pedal boards that you can take your idea of what you want your pedal board to be and you can turn it into something really like pro level. It makes you feel confident. Those flat patch cables in several instances on this board were really great at saving space and making sure that I could put things together closely and that I could feed the cable in certain ways that if I were using other patch cables, it, the connectors might be too bulky, the cable might even be too bulky, and that I could get away with a lot. I find that the power supplies are running really nice and quiet. I haven't run into any issues with this. The patch bay is super handy for cable management. I don't have to worry about one cable coming on the left side, one coming on the right side, and two coming up at the top. All Just having everything in one place is really, really handy when it comes to setup. And uh, I'm just enjoying it, and I'm having a really great time, and I'm thankful to Rockboard, Framus, and Warwick for wanting me to show this off to you guys. I'm very happy with this pedal board, and I look forward to seeing how I'm going to use it in the near future. It's a little heavier than I want my pedal board to be, but oh well, such is the way of things. It's a fantastic setup, and I enjoy it a lot. So thanks a bunch to Framus, Warwick, and Rockboard for sending all this stuff to me. I think this is something that you guys should take a look at. It's an option that you guys should consider when you're looking for pedal boards. It's rock solid. The board is lightweight. All the extra weight is basically coming from the pedals and everything on there. The sizes available are numerous. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. I'm having a lot of fun with this, and I hope you guys all enjoyed this look at my brand new huge pedal board. If you did, please let me know in the comment section below, and please do consider subscribing to my channel and come back for another video very, very soon. Thank you all for spending your time with me on this day, and until next time, I'm Sean Pierce Johnson wishing you all out there great tone and happy stomping. Cheers. Cheers.